Hey everybody, another beautiful morning working out here on the uh, Great Western Buildings uh, 50 by 80 shop. We've got uh, less than a dozen purlins left to put, left to put up. Blah. We've got less than a dozen purlins to put up. Um, it's just kind of slow going being only me, but hey, it's getting done. Slow and steady wins the race, right? But really, how can you beat this view? Beautiful Sunday morning. <laughs> I mean, really, we're surrounded by soybeans, corn, and a few great neighbors. You can't get anything better than this in life, so we'll just go ahead and get back to building. See, try to do this with only one person. That's why I've got the ratchet strap to hold everything together, so I can move the purlins around, get them adjusted, side to side and not have everything fall down the building. So <laughs> it's it works. Oh, just like that. We're secured. Now we can finish putting in the rest of the bolts. There's two bolts on this side of the beam, there's two bolts on the actual flange or the tab, and there's two bolts on the other side. So definitely no shortage of hardware to get everything up here and secure. So we'll keep working away. Hey folks, look at this. We have a building. All the steel is up. Look at this goodness. All of our purlins are up. All of our bracing is up. Our girts are up, all of our nuts and bolts are firmly in place. The only thing left to do is the rake angle trim on the ends of the purlins, but those are a little too big and unwieldy for me to manage myself. So we've been working on grading the floor in here. It's far from perfect, but it's better than it was, which is good because we're supposed to get an inch to two inches of rain uh tomorrow so yeah back here is far better than it was you can actually tell there's some grade and slope and uh, of course some more work to do yet but since this was all so wet and soft uh, i've just been going and trying to work a little bit each day compact it move some dirt around and if you remember last week this was a giant three foot deep hole and now i'm clearly standing on it so that is great news our project our last project really to do is move the pile of steel all the siding from under those tarps uh, and get it into the building uh, one I want to have it closer to the site so we don't have to walk with 25 foot sheets of steel everywhere uh, but B if we do get rain um, even a quarter inch of rain will make this entire area a giant mud pit and pretty much impassable for a skid steer or anything to get through um, or to walk in. So the goal is to get that in there. Uh, but my bigger question is, is some of those sheets in there are 25 feet long. I have 14 foot doorways. So the question is how to fit a 25 pound cat through a 14 foot door. So we're gonna get a little creative, see if we can't bring them in on the telehandler, uh, kind of crab them in as far as we can go and then pick them up with the skid steer and spin it around the rest of the way. We'll give that a shot, see if it works. Uh, most, of the pal most of the piles of steel should be pretty manageable to work with, but we'll see. So we're just going to, um, what's that, what is that, uh, how's that saying go? Weston, how's that go? Ain't nothing to it but to do it. Here we go. So here we go. Hey 
Hey everybody, today is a new day. It is still hot and sticky and potentially two inches of rain forecasted for us in the next 36 hours. So wonderful. So what does that mean for us? Well, a little bit of work left to do. Uh, luckily we got all of our steel tarped up last night. A couple of trim boxes we've already opened along with the one we haven't. Um, along with the rest of our steel panels over here now is all sorted. This pile is mostly going to be the um, sidewalls above the wainscot. Of course your ridge cap. And then under here is our burnished slate for all of our wainscoting and roof for the lean-to and above the porch. Um, the big panels out here these are mainly for the roof. It's about, I think, 25 foot long panels. And there's a couple of longer pieces in here for the side walls too, to take care of uh, getting all the way up there. Um, so what I wanna do is go around the edge of the building, knock down the dirt that's kind of creeping up the side of the walls. So when it does rain and pour on us, everything kind of gets wet and squishes down and helps kind of meld into uh, slurry and then harden up again. This stuff was all chunky and blocky and rocky and loose uh, like this stuff, um, but then it rained a lot, like five inches and everything sort of pooled together and started to fill in so we don't have uh, as big of gaps in here anymore. Pretty much at the end of this tarp is where the excavation line was. Uh, and there was a big depression in here um, where the dirt was. And that's pretty much gone away now. Uh, backside here with the lean-to, I guess we haven't really gone back here much. Mainly because it's been so wet. Um, so what we have here is we're looking at the back from the cold side. And we're going to have one, two, three, four stalls for the horsies uh, in the event of bad weather or one of them is sick. Uh, they'll be able to go in there and seek some shelter. Uh, no permanent pasture or no, no permanent uh, places for them inside the, the shed, of course. Just uh, this little run-in area that'll be about if you walk in. It'll be about maybe 10... 10 feet deep from the doorway just so they've got space to be in here, turn around to get out of the weather. And then of course this back area will all return to pasture. Um, so they'll have some shade under here too, which is really nice. They have no shade in these pastures. Uh, so as I was saying, this will all go back to pasture once the lift is gone. Our big dirt mound will be uh, put back over here. That's all black dirt that was excavated from this area. Uh, so that'll all be put back and then seeded and turned back into pasture. Uh, over on this side of the building, behind the uh, shop side, we're gonna end up having more of a person space uh, thoughts maybe at one point in time and close it we may put a hot tub uh, but definitely for the coming years just a nice sitting area where we can sit and watch the sunset over there when it's not obscured by clouds um, that really is a peaceful view if you've seen some of the uh, pictures from our instagram feed uh, the, the sunsets out here are just lovely so one of the things we have left to do is the anchor bolts for these door jams. Now, I've mentioned this before, is we did not get a chance to set these in concrete because the concrete actually comes up to the bottom of the door jam and we can't put the door jams in until the concrete's poured, but we had everyone lined up to put up the building. So we've kind of done a backwards process and drilled these in. Uh, I still have to line them up and then epoxy them and then that will be in there solid so when they concrete guys do come back to pour these doorway caps uh, they'll just be pouring over uh, that four inches of anchor bolt and that will give us our minimum of uh, depth or coverage in concrete for the uh, for the door jams now that's a secondary structure so not really load bearing uh, so we don't need the you know the 13 inch depth that we had in these anchor bolts here uh, for the main steel structures but uh, that's one thing to do on the list, which I'm going to do when it's not 90 degrees outside because it's just been kind of gross. 
The other thing we have to do really is put on, there's little girt, uh, girt tabs that go on here. One, two, three of them, uh, four of them up each of the side columns here uh, to span between here and here. So when we put in our uh, J channel here for our for our wainscoting or our, uh, panels, they have something to screw into. And then of course we have the base angle trim that goes along here, uh, which gets anchored or screwed into here and then laps over. So really those are the last big things to do and those aren't even big things. Uh, so I've been trying to focus on getting the site cleaned up, do some grading, and just kind of get the area prepped again so when it does rain, uh, it doesn't pool as badly as it has been. So our little project for today is simply going to be taking our two trailers and get them into the building. Uh, horses need to go back over in that pasture and if it does rain uh, as much as they anticipate it might I don't want to have to deal with trying to pull them out of there in muddy conditions or if the little creek uh, over or under our driveway here happens to overflow which it does maybe once a year in a really heavy rain which this might be uh, where the horse trailer is that's going to have some standing water in it and if we get enough it'll have a lot of standing water and I prefer not to have water in the horse trailer. So we are just going to take old uh, truck Norris here, I believe, and grab our trailers and park them. We will see where everything fits in. We've got a uh, you know, 14 foot door here and let's just get them in here and see where they hide. I'm probably gonna just back the horse trailer straight in here and the pop-up camper is probably going to get tucked in here and slotted in here at an angle and we'll see how things work and this also gives us kind of an opportunity to see where, where we want to park things and lay things out once we uh, actually are done and start storing things in here and especially if we pour the floor uh, where we want to put things if we want to do how thick we want the floor to be in here uh, just kind of give us a guide of of what's going where so let's go grab the campers and I see one screw I dropped. Oh, I think this is the only screw that I have seen that I dropped. Otherwise, everything else has been picked up and cleaned. So we'll go ahead and grab our campers and magically they will appear. And boom, we got campers. Check that out. Horse trailers in here, pop-up campers in here. Definitely need to figure out a good approach to get this thing in here. If I, I backed up uh, sorry, what did I do? I backed up, tried to back in right here right away. That took a couple attempts. Maybe just a matter of getting the angle figured out. Or else backing all the way up, trying to turn in. I guess we'll see. But who would have thought trying to move two trailers, which was essentially wrapping up power cords, hooking them on a trailer hitch, and driving would be such a horrible task in this weather. <laughs> I mean, shucks, there's a nice breeze, the sun is shining, but it is humid and gross. So, last thing we've got left to do here is close up the gate. All right, and over here is our bale spike. It is set up for round bales now, but uh, nothing we can't fix with a little trip to Amazon and uh, evening with the welder. So we've got a place about a mile up the road, uh, Soquist Hay and Straw. They have the large, large squares for us that fit in that uh, wonderful hay box. And uh, we get more of those so I don't have to trek to Duluth twice a year for 350 or so small squares. That pretty much takes a day out of your life and a lot of driving and it's really no fun to do typically in October or January so wander over here say hi to the horsies and then uh, we'll call this one a wrap for right now the next uh, next step will be starting some of that siding and the base angle trim so 
appreciate you if you would uh, like and subscribe if you have not yet. And of course, uh, share with your friends because we've got great things like cars and shops and horses. Yes, there's a horsey. Hi. Here comes another horsey. There's Izzy. Yes. Ooh, there they all are. Come on, guys. Run free. There they go. So if you like watching us put up this shed here, go ahead and uh, like and subscribe below if you have not yet. And of course, tell your friends because we'd like to uh, like to grow our channel, get more content, and be able to do more fun things with you. So uh, for right now, I'd say go ahead and uh, have yourself a great day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you all very soon. Bye-bye.